In this episode, we get back on the road to Alaska, heading for our next planned stop, a three-day visit to the gateway of the American West, St. Louis, Missouri. From Florida to Alaska, from the East Coast to the West Coast, Join Jane and Steve celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, traveling across North America in the Cool Nana Coach, their 27-foot-4 Freedom Elite Class C motorhome, as they visit the many beautiful points of interest in all 50 United States on their golden anniversary adventure. We leave our camp at Land Between the Lakes in Grand River, Kentucky and head further north on I-24, crossing the famed I-24 bridge over the Ohio River, which connects Paducah, Kentucky and Metropolis, Illinois, home of Superman, where a two-ton bronze statue of the Man of Steel stands laying claim to Metropolis as his birthplace. Our drive eventually continues on Interstate 64 to the DraftKings at Casino Queen Casino and RV Park in East St. Louis. Although the area is considered crime-ridden and dangerous, the well-manicured and well-maintained grounds of the RV Park are adequately protected with excellent security. The location is absolutely perfect as a base camp from where we will visit the city of St. Louis. Of the many points of interest besides the Gateway Arch, we've chosen to visit the home of the famed Budweiser Clydesdales and the incredibly beautiful Missouri Botanical Garden. We set up camp at the RV Park and survey the area. The RV Park is surprisingly nice considering the low cost. It's a gated property, slightly removed from the casino area, has a laundry facility and a courtesy shuttle on demand to the casino. Convenient city rail transportation to St. Louis is nearby, but we have Equinox with us to navigate us across the mighty Mississippi River into the city. Well, before we cross that bridge, having spent several days in Kentucky to get here, it's only appropriate to add the Kentucky sticker to our state's traveled map on Cool Nana. The old courthouse in downtown St. Louis, part of Gateway Arch National Park, was built between 1839 and 1862. Some of the most pivotal court cases in American history were heard inside its courtrooms. It is where Dred and Harriet Scott sued for freedom, Virginia Minor fought for her right as a woman to vote, and more than 300 enslaved African Americans filed suit for their freedom. Continuing in the park, we walk just a few blocks east to the magnificent Gateway Arch. We begin in the basement where we find an incredible visitor center and museum from where we will begin our journey from the bottom to the top of the Gateway Arch. We pause our tour of the museum as we spot the entrance for the Arch Tram. As we await our turn to board the tram from the vestibule, we are treated to an audio video presentation depicting the construction of the magnificent Gateway Arch. Here, the final pre-constructed section of the arch is installed. Had it been even 1 64th of an inch, 
incorrectly constructed, it would not have fit in the arch. It's been said that a time capsule is embedded in this section. Well, Jane's all set to go. She's got her ticket for the first car on the tram. This very unique tram transports you 630 feet to the observation deck at the very top of the monument. There are a number of small observation windows on the east and west side of the top of the arch. Well, what do you know? I can see our campsite and cool Nana from here. St. Louis enjoys a rich and proud history, spanning nearly 260 years. Originally a major trading center for westward pioneers and Native Americans, later a shipping center for riverboat traffic on the Mississippi, and later the transformation into a hub for railroad traffic yielding routes to all points in America's westward expansion and playing a pivotal role in the American Civil War in the mid-19th century. The Gateway Arts Museum carefully and accurately depicts the events with magnificent displays of artifacts and information. Let us continue as we visit the home of the Anheuser-Busch Brewery and the exquisite stables for their world-famous Clydesdales. Anheuser-Busch breeds its Clydesdale horses in-house, maintaining pure bloodlines in its signature breed. The Clydesdales are, if you will, the Budweiser ambassadors, and Anheuser-Busch affords them the care and dignity you would expect for any ambassador. The horses get the very best training, medical care, and love from their handlers. From the meticulously clean stables and high-quality diet to the daily cleaning and grooming each Clydesdale receives, the result is a world-recognized champion breed horse along with one of the most recognized beers in history. An old adage states, you only get one chance to make a first impression. From their unique training, signature hoof feathers, meticulously groomed hides, to their incredibly expensive and luxurious bridal gear, these well cared for beasts of burden present an image that speaks unsurpassed quality. Alrighty, so hello, my name is Jenna, and behind me I have Slick, and we would like to welcome you guys to the Clydesdale Stables. So today we're going to go through a little bit of our daily routine with these guys and how we get them all ready. So every morning we're going to start off with a bath, starting out the white shaggy parts of their legs, or what we call their feathers. 
We're going to use a combination of mane and tail shampoo and conditioner and bars of Castile soap. Get it all nice and sudsy, then just rinse it off. After that, we can move on to their body. So we start with a curry comb. We're going to take this in circular motions all over their whole body, and this will pull up any loose dirt. He's a very like, heavy breather where it sounds like he's snorting, and he just does it like everything. It's very bizarre. So after that, we're going to go in with a vacuum. So we're just going to take it and vacuum up his entire body. We do this with dog. <laughs> but as you can imagine, it does take some serious training to get them to the point where you can just vacuum them. So instead, for our younger horses, we're going to go in with a stiff brush. And it's just a brush with stiff bristles. So we'll take it all over his whole body to get rid of all that hair and dirt if we couldn't use the vacuum. After that, we're going to go in with a soft brush. Again, just as it sounds, just a brush with soft bristles. Once again, I'm going to go all over his whole body and just look at all of his hairs laying in the same direction and give him a nice little polish. Following that, we go in with a plain old comb. We're going to use this to comb out his foretop, his mane, his tail, and then even the feathers down on his legs. And finally, we're going to go in with a wet washcloth. This we're going to use both on his nose and in the corners of his eyes to get rid of any dirt or graying or boogies that may have collected in either of those spots. So after all that, you are left with clean Clyde Stale, and if they're going to an event that day, then we're going to move on to breeding. Jane and I had the opportunity to get up close with Slick and Jenna and pose for a memorable photo. Jane is extremely fond of flowers and plants and had our next stop on her must-see list. So we now move along to the Missouri Botanical Garden on Shaw Boulevard. It's also known informally as Shaw's Garden for founder and philanthropist Henry Shaw. The garden offers 79 acres of beautiful horticultural display, including a 14-acre Japanese strolling garden, Henry Shaw's original 1850 estate home, and one of the world's largest collections of rare and endangered orchids. For over 161 years, the garden has been an oasis in the city, a place of beauty and family fun, and also a center for education, science, and conservation.
We're strolling through the Climatron, the first geodesic dome to be used as a conservatory. It opened to the public on October 1, 1960. In 1976, it was named one of the 100 most significant architectural achievements in United States history. Climatrine emphasizes the climate control technology of the greenhouse dome. The Climatron has no interior support and no columns from floor to ceiling, allowing more light and space per square foot for plants than conventional designs. We depart the Climatron Dome and continue our walk through the magnificent Chinese and Japanese garden sections, enjoying the beauty and serenity offered by these wonderful botanical and sculpture treasures.
These geese look like they're dancing to the tune. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you have not yet, please subscribe to help grow our channel and so that you will receive a notification when our next video, Kansas City, is published. We hope you enjoyed traveling with us as we continue on our golden anniversary adventure.